Hey guys, welcome back to 9180. So a lot has been going on behind the scenes and I wasn't really ready to share any of it publicly on my YouTube channel until I knew it was a for sure thing. If you've been watching my videos, especially if you watched video 24, then you know every financial decision that Randy and I have made in the last few years has been in preparation of building our dream home and our business here on our property overlooking Keystone Lake. And it all started about three and a half years ago. We went in search for the perfect piece of land and we found this magical spot high up on a hill overlooking the lake. It's five acres of mostly wooded land. It's got two creeks that feed into a natural pond. It's just wonderful. And so we got our house ready and two and a half years ago, we sold our first home, our suburban house in Owasso. And then we made what I will always believe was the best decision. We decided to join the tiny house community and we moved into a tiny house and my parents let us park for free on their property. And it was not only a great decision from a financial standpoint because it let us pay down debt and save up money, but it was also a decision that allowed us to live out our values. We are minimalists. We believe one of the best things a person can do is unburden themselves of all the unnecessary clutter in their lives. And once we got rid of all of our stuff, it just felt so liberating. And I think as a society, we just like to hold on to things. I don't know why. I don't know if we find our own self-worth in our possessions. Um, most of the things we have, I believe, are things we do not use we do not need and it's things that oftentimes someone else could use or someone else might need and um, I've decided that no matter how big our house ends up being I will never go back to that way of living ever again and once again <laughs> I've strayed off course but anyway um, as much as we've really enjoyed our tiny life at the end of last year Randy and I both felt really ready for that next chapter in our lives. We were ready to start our business. We're ready to start a family. So we really got serious about getting the land ready to build on. And we hired a guy to come out here and he cleared and took down almost an acre worth of trees. And we cleared two separate spots. And um, one spot nearer to the main road is really flat for parking, which is necessary for our business and then tucked away um, down away from the main road is another large clearing that we had him clear um, and that's for the house pad and the aerobic system and all of that and once he was done knocking all those trees down we ended up with a ginormous <laughs> pile of trees i mean like the size of a small office building it was huge so um, I remember we had a day, we asked friends and family members who were pyros and like to play with fire to come out and help us cut and burn wood and we were only able to pay them with firewood. But I did hire my Uncle Alan to come out and help cut and burn down the rest of the trees and I took a couple of weeks of vacation to help him and Randy bought a chainsaw and he took a few days of vacation and we were all out here and we put literal blood, sweat, and tears into preparing this land for us to build on. Especially my Uncle Alan put literal blood, sweat, and tears into it. And then after that, it was ready to um, narrow down our decisions on the house. Well, if you see behind me, you see a bunch of trees, it's summertime, but if it was wintertime and if the trees were bare, you would actually be able to see the lake. We have a winter lake view here, but Randy and I didn't want to just see the lake during the winter time. We wanted to see it year round. And in order to achieve that, I designed a vertical house. Um, I took inspiration from Second Empire Victorian Homes and I designed a four-story Victorian house with a center tower. And if you know me, you know I'm obsessed with symmetry. I um, designed the house to be perfectly symmetrical. 
And because most of the design was centered around our business, um, it had some pretty grand features. Um, two kitchens, two fireplaces, six different porches and balconies, including an observation deck at the top of the tower of the fourth story. Um, it was pretty grand. <laughs> and um, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Practical Magic. I love that entire house, but I'm obsessed with the staircase in particular and I um, designed a grander version of that turning tower staircase for our house. So once I got that on paper we then hired an architect to turn my drawings into blueprints and then we um, interviewed several builders and we picked a builder and we signed on with them and we had to pay that sign on fee and we were doing budget meetings and we realized that this grand house was going to be very expensive and we didn't want to compromise on it at all um, and we qualified for 100 percent financing but randy and i really knew that we wanted a down payment we didn't want that high of a mortgage so that is where <laughs> the Little House of Horrors comes into the story. We decided to invest in a piece of property and the plan was to renovate the Little House of Horrors and move into it until we were ready to build and then the sell of that house was going to pay for a huge chunk of the construction. But then, right in the middle of our rehab for the Little House of Horrors, the most unexpected thing happened. Um, Randy and I stumbled across a listing for a house. This house is nothing like the house that I designed and it's not near Keystone Lake, it's near Skyatook Lake, but it really has the potential to be perfect for the business that we want to run. And the house I designed was 2,900 square feet and that's because I'm a minimalist and um, I don't like wasted space and every single room that I designed had a purpose and a function and it was only large enough to serve that purpose and that function. But this house in Skyatook is um, nearly 4,000 square feet. And even after we put money into it to get it ready for the business, it's still gonna be a lot cheaper than the build. So, Randy and I texted our realtor, Sherry McLean, and we said, we know this is insane because we're right in the middle of one renovation, but we have to get into this house. We have to see this listing. And so she made the arrangements. We went and we fell in love with what it could be. And so we made out this list of pros and cons between building on the land we've been dreaming about forever or buying and renovating. And there was a list about this long of all the reasons why we should buy and renovate the Skyatook Lake House. And almost all of those reasons came back to it being the more financially wise decision. And Randy and I have always prided ourselves in making financially wise decisions. So um, we went ahead and we purchased it. And it's so crazy to go from no debt to now having this enormous amount of debt and two mortgages. <laughs> but um, in the long run, it's really going to be the right decision. And if there was ever any need for confirmation that we did, in fact, make the right decision, it came when we listed the land for sale. Um, our realtor, Sherry, she warned us that land usually sits for a long time and that we shouldn't be discouraged if it takes, you know, up to eight months to get an offer. And so we had kind of accepted that and it went on the market. And after just one day of being on the market, we got a really strong offer. And it was from a couple who doesn't have a realtor. So we're only paying our realtor's fees and it was just very shocking. Um, and as exciting as it is to get rid of some of that debt, it's also really emotional because for three and a half years, 
I consider this my future home. And when that couple called our realtor, they said, you know, they got an alert as soon as um, it went on the market and they came and checked it out and they really felt like this is where they were meant to be. And that was kind of hard to hear because for so long I felt it was where I was meant to be, you know. I had pictured my future children playing in the creek and in the woods and so that was really hard but I really think it was a God thing and um, when it happens that fast it's like how can it not be meant to be and uh, I'm sorry <laughs> um, but anyway what's really awesome about it happening that fast is that we'll be closing on the land on August 28th, which is just a couple of days before the first mortgage is due on the Skyatook Lake House. And that's really great because I've really been stressing about the fact that until, until the Little House of Horror sells, we're going to be paying two mortgages and utility bills on two houses. So um, it's really all worked out and I really feel like it is very much all meant to be. But anyway, <laughs> that's the big announcement. The big announcement is we have sold our land. We are not building our dream house. We are going to renovate the new dream house that we have purchased. And I plan on starting another series. It's gonna be called The Carriage House. And it's gonna center around the transformation of our new Skyatook Lake House. So anyway, I hope you, um, continue watching this series and also if you're interested in watching our next adventure I encourage you to do so it'll be right here on my youtube channel 9180 thanks bye bye